In this video we will build an Unreal Engine 5 style environment. For this we will use the Megascans asset library, learn how to bring out the maximum amount of detail and finally optimize our geometry for higher efficiency. So if you're interested in 3D in general, you probably also have regularly some nice Unreal Engine 5 videos popping up in your YouTube timeline. And for me, I'm always very fascinated about the details that Unreal Engine 5 can show in real time, especially in terms of environments. And in this video here, I want to talk about what I personally think are the best steps to kind of try to replicate the same kind of feeling, the same kind of look in an offline renderer such as V-Ray. So in order to show you the workflow that personally works best for me, I built this simple demo scene in here that we're gonna be using for this tutorial. As usual, on Patreon, you can always find my scene files and a lot of additional bonus content. You can also support the channel through that. So in terms of environment, the scene is actually fairly simple. We just have a camera view that you can see up here. And I positioned this hero object, this car here in the foreground. And the environment is kind of built around that. The environment doesn't really work from any kind of angle. It just works from the angle where the camera is positioned. And anything else is also not really required because the only thing that you care about is what you can see through the camera itself. So now let's switch to the object color so we can easier see what kind of assets are being used. I have this kind of greenish canyon wall that you can see and it's just this kind of size and everything else here is an instance of this canyon wall. And then I have this kind of yellow floor asset, which also is being used quite a lot in the scene. And those are the only two assets that I basically use in terms of environment in order to get this kind of interesting and quite detailed result. So as you can see, once you have some nice assets, it's quite easy to build up some quite nice looking and detailed environment. So in this tutorial, we're gonna focus mainly on how we can import and prepare the assets and what is the best way in order to bring out the most amount of detail. For the environment, we're gonna be using assets from Quixel Megascans and that's the asset library that comes together with Unreal Engine. So you can also download these assets for use in other renderers. I did a tutorial about how to use Quixel Bridge and how to set up Megascans models in general. You can also find that in my channel. And here we're gonna use a slightly different workflow in order to get the best details for our environment. So here under collections, you can find different kind of environment collections already. If you go to this environment tab, then you can choose different subcategories. I chose natural and then I chose this Ceric shrublands category in here. And here you can find lots of nice assets to build these kind of interesting canyon environments. So in order to keep it simple, we're just gonna be using two assets. We're just gonna be using this asset right here and then also this asset right here for the cliff wall. And the most important thing is how you download those assets. So here on the right hand side, you can set up the settings. You can start with the resolution and here I normally choose a resolution of 4K. It also supports an 8K resolution, but I find the amount of detail is not that much more and it normally just tends to slow down your overall rendering and also building time of your scenes. So I would normally choose a 4K resolution unless I have to go somewhere extremely close detail. And then the most important stuff is here in the download settings. So in here you can choose all of the different maps which you want to download together with this asset. I'm not gonna go into the details because I said I have a own dedicated video about this already in my channel. What's more important for this tutorial in here is to go into this modeling tab. And here we can choose the different kind of resolutions for the mesh which we want to download. So here you can see different kind of LODs and LOD stands for level of detail. In this case, LOD zero is the one that has the most amount of detail here, roughly 20,000 triangles. And then LOD eight would be the one that has the least amount of triangles. So I will normally download LOD zero. And what we also want to download for this tutorial is the high poly source. So that is just the raw scanning data. So here I exported both of those assets to 3ds Max and I just applied a gray dummy material to them. 
and you can see the difference between the two assets. So on the left hand side, we have the LOD zero. So that's the highest LOD level that Quixel Megascans provides. And then on the right hand side, you can see the high poly mesh. So that's basically the raw scanning data. So now let's compare those two assets. And of course you can immediately notice that the one on the left hand side here has a lot of less mesh details compared to our high poly source. And of course, in order to get some kind of comparable results, let's try to use the normal map that's provided that goes together with this LOD zero level. And for this, we will just need to add a new V-Ray normal map modifier in here, put this into the normal map slot, and then connect this one into the bump slot and also invert here the green channel. And then also make sure that the bump map strength is set to a value of 100. Again, if you have any questions about why to do this, then you can check out my video about how to use Megascans assets in 3ds Max and V-Ray. And that explains all of this in much greater detail. So now we have a lot more comparable result between those two, but there are still some major differences. And now let's try to examine those. So here for our high poly source, you can see, for example, that all of those small individual pebbles are all casting their own shadow. And that's a little bit missing here in this one where we use the normal map. And the reason for that is that basically just this mesh here is casting the shadow. So the quite low poly mesh, then all of the details come from the normal map just gives the illusion that this mesh here is much more detailed. So there are a lot less shadows which are happening here on the low poly mesh. So while this illusion works quite good, for example, in this viewing angle, if you choose a much lower angle, for example, something like this, you can see that the normal detail doesn't really match anymore the mesh we have. And here the illusion clearly starts to fall apart. On the other hand, if you check here the high poly source, you can see that we have a lot more mesh detail going on. All of the small individual stones are resembled here in the mesh data. And we basically get a much more detailed result and representation of the surface in here. So in order to get the most amount of detail, it's quite safe to say that we want to try to use this mesh in here. But the normal map still has some advantage in the higher frequency details. So as you can see from this distance, Basically this mesh here looks a lot more detailed, but what if we zoom in a little bit, for example, you can see there's these kind of individual cracks here on the stone and so on. And if we choose a very similar angle here for this stone, you can see while the overall mesh itself has much more resolution, we're missing these kind of smaller, higher frequency details on the mesh. So now how about the normal map that we use for this one in here? Can we also use this for the high poly source? And in theory you can, but I will show you what will happen if you do that. So let me just duplicate this normal map slot here then also put this into the bump map slot of this material. Also make sure we have a value of 100. So now we're getting this additional detail from the normal map, but there's another problem that this kind of approach here gives us. And that is that some of the parts here are getting way over amplified. So for example, this one is our base geometry. You can see we have this kind of crack in here already being resembled in the high poly source mesh. And now we add the normal map and this normal map is coming from a much lower polygon source. So that means all of this information, which is not in the actual mesh data of the low poly source is now also part of the normal map. And now it's being applied to a more higher polygon mesh. And that results that basically some of the parts here are being over amplified and don't really look realistic anymore. So that's why I normally don't tend to use the low poly normal map in the high poly mesh data, but I use a slightly modified approach, which I'm gonna show you now. So let's head over to Quixel Bridge and then let's check out those surfaces in here. And here we're gonna check for rock and then I will go for this jacket category here, for example. And then let's try to find some interesting looking rock, for example, this one in here. And then make sure that we download here the displacement map for this one. And now just download this and let's go back to 3ds Max and bring in the displacement texture for this asset. 
So here I loaded already this placement map of the surface, which we just downloaded. And you can see it's a nicely tileable displacement map. And this one doesn't come with a 3D model. It's just a texture map that basically can be applied to any 3D geometry. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So in our normal map, let's just connect this displacement map here. And we're gonna use it as a bump map in this case. So we add this and we disable here the normal map. And you can see there's not so much happening. There's like some tiny details that are being added. Let's just enhance or pronounce this by just applying here a five times multiplier. You can see, yeah, there's something happening. It doesn't look very great for now because at the moment this whole map is stretched across the whole surface here of our geometry and it is probably way to low resolution for that. So let's just use a V-Ray triplanar texture. And then in this triplanar texture, let's choose a value which we feel fits nicer. For example, something like this, or maybe something like 0.5. And now you can see we have some kind of nice details that are already showing up here on the stone. And it doesn't really over pronounce the existing mesh data we have. So as a last step, if we want to, we can try to bring back this normal map in here and not with a value of one, which stands for 100%. Let's choose a lower value, for example, 0.35. So we just have a little bit of the normal map details, which are being mixed here together with our high polygon mesh. And I think like this, we have quite a good balance achieved here with not totally overexposing or over pronouncing certain kind of areas in our model, which kind of looks unrealistic. And I think like this, we can get quite a decent amount of surface detail on our mesh in here. So now I deleted the LOD mesh and I just kept the high polygon source because that's the one that we're going to be using from now on. I connected all the texture maps already that come with the asset. If you have questions about how to do that, I refer you to my other video about mega scans. We're going to learn all of this. And I think now we have quite a nice and detailed result here already. And I think the detail also kind of holds up if you go more closer to the asset here, for example. So this is how it was without the additional bump detail that we added. And now with this additional bump detail, you can go much closer and you can even keep some details in there. So that's now the asset that we're gonna use. And the question is, how are we gonna use that asset in our scene? Because as how it is right now, it is very high poly. And if you would use a lot of those assets, then you might get some slowdown. So there's a preferred way how to set up this, which I'm gonna show you now. So whenever you have assets that have a quite high polygon count, it is very advisable to convert those into something which is called a V-Ray proxy. So when you convert your geometry into a V-Ray proxy, that means your geometry data is not present in your scene anymore. It's being saved out in an external file and it will be loaded dynamically during render time. If you want to understand the technical details of V-Ray proxies, I can totally recommend this forum post in here in the Chaos Forum. And that goes into all the technicalities of the V-Ray proxies and you will easily understand why you should totally use them, definitely for all of your high polygon geometry data and what kind of advantages they have. So I will link this forum post in the description of this video and you can check it out in there. So now I also added the high polygon source for the cliff using the same workflow like what we have for the floor here. And now let's convert both of them into a V-Ray proxy. So for this, let's select both of the objects and let's go to the V-Ray mesh exporter here and the V-Ray menu. Once you do this, a new dialog here pops up. You can choose a folder where the stuff is being saved. I will just save it here in this default folder. And then we want to automatically convert those to proxies. So after the conversion, those models here would be replaced with the proxy files. And that's basically everything that you have to do. So you just click on OK in here. And then this geometry is saved as a viewer proxy on your hard disk. You can immediately see in your viewport that the amount of detail here is greatly reduced. You can see like a rough representation of how this proxy here looks like. But as you can see, the rendering data is still the full geometry data that we had before. 
And now we also have the additional benefit that our scene size gets much smaller once we save it because it wouldn't need to store all of this geometry data into the scene in here. So here I took the floor patch that we just convert to a V-Ray proxy and I scattered it around in the scene and gave every of those instances a different mesh color so that you can easily see how many of those objects we have now. The question is now, how does it perform with a V-Ray proxy? Let's just try it out. Let's start a new rendering. So you can easily guess how many polygons those are. You can see it immediately starts rendering. We can immediately go close in there into all of the details. And it's just astonishing like what V-Ray is able to handle in terms of polygon data once all of this stuff here is converted to a V-Ray proxy. So once you have your individual assets prepared, it's actually very simple to generate these kind of like very high detail environments. The scene here just uses two assets, one for the cliff and one for the floor. And I just basically instance them around in the scene change the scaling, change the rotation and so on until I get a kind of layout which I liked and which works good for the camera angle. So then after I distributed my assets, I just put like a plane in here and I gave it a water shader so it looks like there's some kind of river here going through this valley. And I also added some kind of procedural foam here around those rocks so it looks a bit like the river is flowing and that the water here would be a little bit splashed and so on. So if you want to know how this is done, there's also our own dedicated video tutorial that you can find in my channel about how to generate these kind of nice looking foam effects. And then I also have here a wetness effect where the stones near the water, they are much darker and they are more reflective so that they just look way more integrated with the water in here. So there's also a video tutorial that you can find in my channel in order to understand how this effect here is done. And that basically completes this whole tutorial. So if you watch this tutorial until here, chances are that you also like the content that I provide over on my Patreon. We can download, for example, all of my scene files, watch a whole course on car rendering and additional bonus videos, and also support this channel. So head on over there if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.